Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And because times are tough, we're taking a look at the top 11, because I couldn't keep it to just 10, budget knife brands that you can take a look at right now. And I'm going to go through and tell you what some of the unique things are that they offer. So let's get into it. All right, so this list is not just for the folks who need a good knife but can't afford to spend a whole lot to get your hands on one. It's also for the folks who are bemoaning the plethora of very expensive knives out there these days. And there are some very expensive knives that you can get your hands on. But if you're worried about you know the absence of good budget offerings, this list should put your mind to ease because there's a lot of fantastic stuff out there that's not gonna drain your wallet. Now, the way I kind of narrowed it down, like I said, it's top 11 budget brands. Couldn't keep it to just 10. And there's a lot of good, well, let me tell you a couple of the brands that aren't going to appear on this list. Stuff like Spyderco, Cold Steel, Buck Knives, K-Bar. Fantastic knife companies that make some really fantastic, affordable knives as well. But as a brand, they aren't really what, what we consider anyway, a budget brand. These brands are, even though some of these brands may have some more expensive offerings as well. These are the things you can kind of click onto a brand and browse through and know you're gonna find a lot of solid affordable options because that's what they're made for. That's what they cater to. And I'm gonna go alphabetically, so it's not to, uh, you know, not to, to offend anyone with any rankings or anything like that. So we're gonna start at the beginning of the alphabet, or very nearly so, with Best Tech. And this knife right here is the Swordfish, and it represents, I think, one of the best things to happen to budget knives in recent years. Not this model particularly, it's just an illustration of what we call the $50 D2 flipper craze, even though this knife comes in at $52. It's a, you know, $50 plus or minus. It used to be, you know, good knives with D2 steel were more expensive, but five years ago maybe is, is when it kind of really started the amount of really great folders you can get with this high edge retention steel at a budget price is astonishing. And the Swordfish is, even though it's $52, like I said, is an exceptional value. Got a four inch blade, D2 steel, like I mentioned, high flat grind, great profile, G10 scales. Actually, we've got a, uh, a split set of scales here. You've got a black bolster and different colors for the other section ball bearings in the pivot. That's a big part of the uh, the $50 D2 flipper craze, along with that liner lock. And as such, you get a very fine feeling knife with great action and very enviable materials at the price point. Truly is remarkable. And Bestech has an absolute ton of $52 D2 flippers. The other thing you'll see that Bestech's doing a little bit more recently um, is they're gonna, they're doing budget and premium versions of the same model, not just premium knives and budget knives separated, but knives like this Tulip right here come in, let's see, the budget version's like 48 bucks, 14C 28N Sandvik blade, about one and a half inches long. You've got a liner lock here. You've got ball bearings in the pivot here too. You can do the, uh, the front flipping thing, even though I'm not great at it, especially on a small knife. So sort of my slightly larger than average hands really get in their own way a little bit, but there we go. You can do the, uh, I can do the index finger flip on it a little bit better. 48 bucks, but if you really like it and you want to upgrade later, there's titanium versions of this that I think come with S35VN, uh, if not M390 actually, I can't remember for sure. Uh, yeah, M390 blades. Those are over 125 bucks or so, however, so budget options are really great. And like I said, they're doing that more and more. You're gonna have the exact same models available on the budget side and the premium side, which there's not a lot of companies that, that do that outside of you know, creating exclusives for dealers where there might be a fancier version. But having regular line item versions, affordable versions of the expensive knives is definitely part of Best Tech's DNA. All right, next up, Civivi. We, and we gotta talk about, honestly, the Elementum because it is the poster child, I think. It wasn't the first, but it is kind of the poster child for that $50 D2 flipper craze. Three inch blade, versatile drop point, neutral handle, 
And it really does encapsulate kind of Civivi's greatest hits is what I've called it before. You've got that D2 blade, even though they use other steels as well, ball bearings in the pivot, letterboxed G10 scales, deep carry pocket clip, and a nice liner lock and tuned really well. Covers it all, but it also shows what Civivi does well as a brand. Super thin edges, that's something they're always very good at. Super thin, super consistent edges. So if you're really uh, keen on that, this is a great brand to look for for those thin edges. And also their quality control is one of the most consistent I've ever seen across any brand really. I think in the, the years of handling Civivis, I remember when the very first ones came out and they all felt super, super good. I think we've had one, and it was actually not this one, but it was another blue Elementum one time that didn't flip super well. Very, very impressive. And the other thing you're gonna see is a lot of releases from Civivi. They put a ton of new models out. So if this isn't your flavor, maybe something like this large knife right here. Uh, this is, I always got, <laughs> they have two versions of this knife. I always gotta make sure I'm getting this one right. The Bull Mastiff. They have a Mastodon, which has a slightly different uh, blade grind going on but has some of those Civivi's greatest hits. They went with a 9CR stainless on this version instead of D2, but about $57 for this. Different handle material, still G10, but they do a lot of exotic looking woods. You can see a lot of stuff like that from them. A lot of Damascus options, well under that $100 price point, which is very cool. So tons of variety, consistent fit and finish, and super thin edges. I think that really, tells you everything you need to know about what makes Civivi, Civivi. All right, next up is CJRB. I've got another cleaver shaped blade here and only one example from CJRB because I think this particularly encapsulates what they do well. They do a lot of very good affordable ball bearing flippers in the budget space, but they also are amongst the, uh, the budget set, I think more than, except maybe the next brand we're gonna look at, really trying to push technology forward for the affordable spectrum. And this version of their Crag Flipper has two prime examples of that. And this is just a $38 knife as well, which is equally imp as impressive. First is the Recoil Lock, a proprietary lock to CJRB. And it, you could, as you can see, I could operate it with my index finger from the spine of the knife. So it gives you finger safe operation. You're not gonna get your fingers in that blade path as you close it. You can operate it a few different ways. You can even, if you use it like a crossbar lock, which you might find on a usually more expensive knife, pull back on that yoke at the back of the blade and you can even flick it open like that rather than using the flipper. Very cool and you don't see a lot of proprietary locks down in this price range because you know, engineering a new lock like that costs money when you could just go with something more established like the liner locks we've been looking at so far. So that is a very cool thing. They've also got this particular steel. It's AR-RPM9, which is a proprietary budget steel for them. It's actually a powder metallurgy steel, not a traditional ingot formed steel. Also something rare to see in this price range at all, much less a proprietary steel like this. And what, they're shoot, what they shot for with their formulation here is something to compete with D2, have similar kind of edge retention, but also be stainless because D2, of course, is only a semi stainless steel. So that's another very cool thing. And overall, I've just got some really fun designs. I mean, this crag is a very cool one, tons of other interesting things to look at and some very cool choices with materials and such going into them as well. All right, next up is CRKT. And I think maybe the two main pillars of their identity on one hand, designer collaborations with the biggest names in the industry, which in the budget space, they have to account for the royalties for those designers, which is why a lot of times you don't always see affordable or, or that affordable of uh, collaborations out there. And the other is interesting mechanisms, more so than CJRB, they like to do really cool feats of engineering. And while some of the stuff like their deadbolt lock and the field strip mechanism are reserved for some of their more expensive models, you can still see some things creeping in to their more, more affordable options. Uh, this one right here, the BT Fighter, a Brian Ty design uh, that comes in about 54 bucks for this large version. And they've got a smaller drop point version for uh, even less than that. 
and it has a button lock mechanism, which is of course one of the most popular mechanisms out there right now. You can do that finger safe operation with just a flick of the wrist and a push of that button and you get really good flipping action too. And this is a really great example of a knife that typically custom versions of this can easily go for about a thousand bucks when we get them here in the, uh, at the knife center. You're not gonna get the uh, integral or, or fancy carbon fiber handles you might get on some of those, but in this case, you get a facsimile of that that still gets across some of that style, which is very, very cool. The rest of this knife, I mean, you've got an HCR stainless blade, you've got good fit and finish, great fidgety action as well, and that style. Another one of their, uh, their kind of recent innovations, recent pushes in the budget space is their new assisted opening mechanism, which for a, a system that's been around for as long as it has to be doing new things with it is pretty cool. You can find it on this Squid XM, which tongue in cheek is kind of their extra medium size. They're leaving room if they wanna do a, uh, a larger version in the future. This is a Lucas Burnley design and it features a torsion bar assisted opening mechanism that I say right now is, is probably the system to beat on the market because it's the easiest one to use. All of them work well on the open because that's what they're designed to do, open a blade quickly once you manually start moving that blade. But you're not really having to fight that blade to close it too much. Some other systems out there might require a little more effort, but this one is tuned for ease of closing in addition to that speed of opening. And the Squid XM is just a fantastic versatile design as well. Three inch blade, D2 steel, hollow grind on that black stone washed finish, frame lock on the back, G10 on the front of this version, and a fairly deep carry pocket clip. Overall, just one of those knives that really encapsulates just about everything you need in a standard EDC pocket knife. All right, next up is Kershaw. And this is the first company we're gonna look at where you can actually get some really good American made options under in, in a very budget oriented price point. Everything we've looked at so far has all been uh, originated in China, but Kershaw will be able to offer you things both imported from the Asian sector and American made options. And we kind of have to talk about the leak. This is amongst the designs to come out in the last 20, 25, 30 years. We did the math once, like the leak feels like it's been around forever and it kind of has, but it's not been around as long as something like the Buck 110, for example. But this is a design that seems like it's gonna be sticking around forever because it's just plain very, very good. Uh, price on them, uh, we're a little bit over 50 bucks on the standard price. Three inch blade, a Sandvik 14C28N Swedish steel, which interestingly, Kershaw was the first brand to use this steel with Sandvik. They had an exclusivity period when Sandvik first came out with this steel. Now you can find it on other stuff as well, but that's a cool thing that Kershaw has brought to the budget space. You've also got their classic assisted opening mechanism designed by Ken Onion, who also designed this particular knife. Slim handles, stainless steel. You can also get uh, liner lock versions with aluminum handles or other upgrades too. And plenty of upgrades on the blade available too because it has been that successful of a knife that they do a bunch of variants on it. But really good options there. Most of the US stuff uh, is assisted opening. There are some uh, more expensive US options that use ball bearings as well. Uh, but also you've got a ton of designs that they import original designs from Kershaw and they've really built up a really cool visual style over the last few years and something very distinctive in the budget space. This is the Cannonball, it's a $55 knife. You've got one of my favorite blades of their, uh, their budget releases the last couple of years. You've got D2 steel with a distinctive shape without being kind of unusable. And that's another area I think they're doing really cool things. They're giving you something not just handles with distinctive style, but a distinctive blade shapes that's still not gonna hamper the utility of being able to use it to cut things every day, which you want to be able to do, of course. But we've got stainless steel handles behind that black washed blade, frame lock, deep carry pocket clip. It's got about everything you need and want in this price range. I mean, fantastic blade shape, good materials, good price. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about Murakneef or the Mora knife. And this brand 
in a way it kind of embarrasses every other knife brand out there because the what you can get for Amora is astonishing and astonishing for the money. Because knives like this, this 511, uh, actually this red one is the premium version. It comes in at $11 as opposed to the $10 of some of the other colors. And it encapsulates why Mora is so good. They take everything available to like modern mass manufacturing to produce a product at an extremely low price, but they don't cut corners on any of the features that count. And that is the design and the rigidity or the strength of these knives. They're only partial tang, but they've been proven to be highly durable knives. They're very comfortable. These basic knives, which is the name of the knife, not a, a descriptor, although kind of is a descriptor too. So comfortable. The blades, they come with a Scandi grind. Actually, a, their Scandies are slightly, slightly hollow because of the, uh, the equipment they use, but over a, a sharpening or two, it's gonna be flat like a normal Scandi. The factory edges on Amora are probably the best you can get just about anywhere. Super razor, razor sharp. And everything you get here, like I said, 10 to $11 knife right here. Everything you need, it's lightweight. It works just as well for construction workers, which you'll often find these in their, uh, their manufactured country of Sweden. You'll find these all over job sites. Works for campers, ultralight hikers, daily utility. You could slip one of these into a pocket if it's large enough. And they have some smaller models too. Just phenomenal. And when you add a couple bucks to the price here, if you spend a little bit more money, uh, you can get a knife like this, the Cansbull, $36 for this version right here. And you've got fit and finish that will embarrass things, double, even triple the price. Everything's just about perfect. Yes, you can see the seam on the mold, but that is it. We've got a nice crisp spine. There's no kind of flubbed edges or anything looking out of place on this knife. They really are fantastic. And tons of great designs, none of them very expensive, all of them very, very useful. All right, next up, Ontario Knife Company, another American company. And we're going to have a, uh, an American knife and a Taiwanese made knife for them right here. That really, it brings together what I think makes Ontario so wonderful in the budget space is they make unpretentious, hard use knives, like knives that are truly made to be used indiscriminately and with no regard to their condition. These are things that are just going to put in the hours and are going to look even better once they start to look beat up. Uh, first up, we'll talk about the uh, the folder made in Taiwan, the Ontario Rat Model 1, or the R Model 2, which is a little bit shorter. $34 for this knife. And pro long proven and respected amongst hard users that don't want to spend a ton of money, whether it's around the house, have your utility, especially outdoors folks. 3.6 inch blade, full flat grind with OS 8 steel. D2 is also available for more money. Nylon handles, but full length unskeletonized liners and multiple barrel spacers along the back, multiple attachment points that create a really solid, strong backbone for the handle of this folding knife. And it's got plenty of length for even larger hands. It's got the ability to choke up because of the flat Ricasso area here. And once you know kind of the, the ins and outs of it, once you're comfortable with it, action, that is exceptionally good. No ball bearings in the pivot here. They went with uh, nylon washers to keep things a little more worry-free. Don't have to worry about cleaning them out quite the same ways. Actually, forget I said nylon. These are phosphor bronze washers in this particular case. Apologies all around. Four position pocket clip, so it carries just about anyway, even though the uh, liner lock is of course right-hand biased. Solid working tool. If you've never experienced one, it may not be as uh, kind of attractive looking as some of these other knives, but this is another one that's got it where it counts. It works super hard. And then some fixed blades. Their American made fixed blade options that Ontario offers are very impressive, whether it's the slightly more expensive rat fixed blade series, kind of the companions to that folder, or I especially like their spec plus line. This is the SP 10. $64 for this particular one. Some of them are a little less expensive. This is the SP10 Marine Raider Bowie. Carbon steel blade, 
over molded handle, full length stick tang in this case, almost a quarter, about a quarter inch thick on that carbon steel blade. Super effective, whether you're using this in kind of a military scenario, they have knives that mimic like the K-Bar knife, the classic Mark II fighter, and they've got other knives that work well for outdoor stuff. This one right here kind of is the perfect blend between the two. Super solid, super reliable, and just imagine this, when this coating starts to wear off, it's got a bunch of wear marks and everything, it's gonna look fantastic the more you use it. And actually, let me talk about the sheath as well. It may not look like much again, it's a kind of a theme. Actually, I'm, I'm really impressed with the sheaths they offer here because they're very well thought out. It's nylon with a hard insert, no uh, positive retention, but you've got a standard kind of handle loop here with a snap. You've also got this strap that in the case of the SP-10 is gonna hook over the guard. And the cool thing about it is this can rotate to either side. So this knife or this sheath is completely ambidextrous. You can use it just by moving that, sh that, uh, that strap over on either side. You've also got a, I believe it's Velcro. Nope, it's not Velcro. You have a stitched loop here on the back for belt carry. You've also got Molly compatibility. Versatility is the name of the game on the sheath here. And again, offering all of this made in the USA for these prices, very cool. All right, next up, we're into the O's. So we've got another one to talk about and that's Openel. Openel, Openel, I never know quite how to pronounce it actually. And here you go, this is the number six. This is a $15 knife. And what you get with an Openel in addition to classic looks, I mean, these knives have looked like this since, I mean, well over a hundred years at this point. I forget when uh, when they first started making these knives. The other thing you're gonna get with an open L that is truly a joy are these extremely thin blades. Not just thin edges, because you have that too, but the blade stock itself, very, very thin. These are not hard use knives. These are knives made for precision, just efficient, joyous slicing. The other thing that kind of makes open L's what they are is this ring right around the pivot area there. And it's a lock and it's twofold. It'll lock the blade in the closed position currently in the uh, current iteration. So it won't come open accidentally. And of course it locks it in the open position as well. And the number six is the smallest knife you can get from them that has this particular locking mechanism. They have smaller knives that don't have that. And then you've got a range of larger knives than this as well. Stainless or carbon steel blades, you can get a 12C27 Sandvik for that stainless. Really cool things. And when it comes to the handles on them, you've got wood, there's new versions with some synthetic uh, colorations as well, made out of plastic. They're not gonna swell like some of these can, but handle comfort is the other thing. Because all open L's are more or less the same, I can say that, that they're all super, super comfortable. All right, next up is QSP. and their whole identity is right there in the name. Quality, service, price is what they count, what they stand for. And probably the most popular QSP knife right now, and for a couple of years, is, is the Penguin. $32 and some change for this version right here. And it's got a ton of knife enthusiast friendly features at this honestly crazy low price for what you're getting. First of all, you can see right there, you've got a Micarta handle. At that price point, you're not typically seeing materials like that. This one is a really cool blue jean micarta. Looks very cool. You've also got a D2 blade, just over three inches. You've got a true sheep's foot blade, in this case, with a higher flat grind. You've got a liner lock. You've got a deep carry pocket clip as well. Really deep carry too. It actually is milled in to a pocket. You can see it on the other side here of the handle material. So it is reversible and it nestles in really deep. That's a little bit of a, uh, a, an extra cost to do it that way, but they still keep the price of the knife way down. Now you've got knives like this one that have uh, washers in the pivot as opposed to ball bearings, and that really fits the character of kind of this folding utility knife right here. But they also do ball bearing flippers very well, such as this Hawk. This one comes in about $55. You've got another cool Micarta option here. It's actually a lot of really crazy stuff going on there. It looks kind of like burlap, somewhere in between. 
Got 14C 28N Sandvik steel here, three and a quarter inches. And you've got that liner lock and thumb studs for two different opening options, each feeling, each giving you that premium ball bearing flipper action here. Deep carry pocket clip, interestingly, not milled inside of the handle like we saw on that Penguin, but this is another just kind of do everything, very affordable knife. And these two together, I think, really show off what truly sets QSP apart from some of the others, other competitors. All right, now we come to R with Real Steel. And Real Steel also does a lot of these ball bearing flippers really well, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh, something different because one of the things I think they do really well and more than anyone else in this budget space is pushing forward the modernized slip joint knives. You can see it on their Luna Light right here, which is a $30 knife for this Knife Center exclusive black and white version. Two and three quarter inch blade, D2 steel. It's got a really nice thin blade stock and full flat grind for easy slicing. You've got a very subtle deep carry pocket clip, which looks very unobtrusive from the outside. And just a completely modern looking design. This is not a riff on like a classic slip joint pattern, but you have the convenience of that non-locking action. You've also got kind of a signature move of theirs, a half stop, but it's not actually a stop halfway along the travel. It's more like a, I always call it like a one third, two third stop, but you've got that hard stop along the closing action, a little bit of a safety feature, which is nice. And it just feels very satisfying too. Now they do make this knife in some other locking versions. They've got some frame lock versions of this knife, but the slip joint is really cool. And you've got other knives like their G slip, uh, the Stolis or Solis, I think it's called. Several other very cool modern slip joints. They're really, really kind of owning that space. The other thing Real Steel does really well, and I think sets them apart from some of their budget competition, are their fixed blades. This knife right here, especially, this is the Bushcraft 3, comes in about 60 bucks. You've got a four inch blade, D2 with a Scandi grind, decent thickness, but the star of the show, these handles. Not only do they look good with the black G10 and red liners, but they're exceptionally well shaped. They're contoured oh so nicely. They fit my hand very well. It's not just a slapped on set of scales. You've got that full shaping going on, which is one of those things that when you're dealing with G10 that has to be machined away, costs a little bit of extra money to do right. And they're still keeping the price very, very reasonable. Feels fantastic, works in a lot of different grips. You got that nice pinch grip there on it. It does it all. For 60 bucks, it's gonna be hard to beat for a bushcraft knife. Of course, you do have that, that Mora competition we talked about earlier, but these feel a little nicer, even though the, uh, the fit and finish on the Mora is easily the equal of this particular knife. Sheath gets a bit of an upgrade over those knives though. Kydex. Works really nicely. You've got hole spacing here that's gonna work with some aftermarket attachments. And it comes with a really cool kind of nylon seatbelt webbing drop loop that you can attach to it right out of the box. Really well considered, really well designed knives at really good prices. And last, but certainly not least, we've gotta talk about the largest by volume pocket knife maker in the world, by far, Victorinox, the maker of the Swiss Army knife. And this is one of those things like take your pick. You can, things start around like 14, $15 for the, the least expensive Swiss Army knife. And even on these two knives right here, I've got the Explorer and the Farmer, even though they're between 40 and $60, I don't have, what are, what are the exact prices anyway? Astonishing value for money. Uh, we'll start with the Explorer because I have it right here. It's about $58 and tons of tools. You've got stuff like the Phillips driver, as is typical, you've got a pair of blades. Make sure I don't cut myself as I'm closing here. Bottle opener, cap lifter, can opener, magnifying glass on this particular one as well. Nice set of scissors. On the back, we've got parcel hook, corkscrew, and a nice leather punch slash awl, toothpick and tweezers. A lot of different things together at that price point. And it, it is the price points that really set them apart. They make so many of these, they've got their, their system and their methods tuned to do these exceptionally well. And that comes into play when you see some of the companies that try to compete with a Swiss Army knife. Typically, if you go feature to feature, 
they're going to be a bit more expensive. And the fact that they do all of that made in Switzerland with you know, more expensive labor than they could if they were made in Asia truly speaks volumes. Fantastic knives. You can get stuff like this with different tool sets, but almost as many tools for about 40 bucks. Even when you go to some of their more premium options like the Farmer that have an Alox aluminum handle, it's a $47 knife right here. You've got slightly thicker blades using the same blade steel. You've got more robust handles, more robust pivot construction. You've got tons of collectible versions of all of these knives, whether you go different colors on the Alox or different graphics on the Celador or the plastic models, just a ton of great stuff. And when it comes to small folding pocket saws, one of the best, if not the best in the business in terms of their cutting capability. Who doesn't love a Swiss Army knife? The fact you can get so much for the prices they offer them, I truly do think is pretty astonishing. That's it for today though. Top 11 brands, if you're looking for an affordable knife that is still gonna be something you can rely on for years to come, you can do a lot worse than looking at these brands right here and finding a good option. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know your favorite budget knives or budget brands uh, as a whole down in the comment section below. To get your hands on any of these knives, we'll point you over to the brand pages for all of these knives down in the comments below. And don't forget about our knife rewards program too. Even on our affordable knives, if you're buying one of them today, you're gonna to be earning some free money to spend on your next purchase. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.